Now we've seen these two go head to head. We've seen it be, I'd say, an even shake. Game five, to me, will be like the greatest game of the series. Now, I remember a game five back in 96. Braves, Yankees, Pettit pitching for the New York Yankees in Atlanta against Hall of Famer John Smoltz. They locked up. It was a pitching duel. The Yankees scored late and win the game. But that game five, to me, was the series. And that may well be the case in this Atlanta Dodgers series this week. Look for LA to win today. Game five tomorrow will be magnificent. I want to talk a little NFL before I get out of here today. And I don't know if you saw it or not or heard it already. How many of you play fantasy football? Okay, so I make a trade yesterday. I'm in a 14-team league. And I look at my opponent's roster. I look at the waiver wires. You have to do all of that. And I'm looking at the roster, and I see this guy in my league, and he's got three stud running backs in his starting lineup. And in a 14-team league, if you're not in one, having three stud running backs is an anomaly. It really is an anomaly. And I look down his bench, and he's got a player named Madison for the Minnesota Vikings who is on his bench. And I'm thinking, let me look and see what weaknesses, if any, he may have. Well, his running backs are Mixon for Cincinnati, Taylor for Indianapolis, and Mostert for San Francisco. Three studs. Three number ones. And then he has Madison, who, by the way, This week will be the running back of choice for the Vikings. Dalvin Cook injures his growing last week. So now Madison is probably one of the most sought-after players on waiver wires in all of fantasy football. I have two quarterbacks. I have three quarterbacks, but I cut one. I have the, the one and the only, not to be surpassed by anyone, Russell Wilson. North Carolina State, great. That's right. Bye week this week, so he can't play. So I'm starting Andy Dalton for the Dallas Cowboys. But I also had on my bench Kirkpatrick for Miami, who in the last four weeks has scored over 25 fantasy points each week. My opponent that I'm looking at here, he's not my opponent this week. We're head-to-head league, but he's not my opponent this week. He has a quarterback for Atlanta as his number one quarterback. And in our league, where points are half-point PPR, Matt Ryan, the Atlanta quarterback, in the last two weeks, in week four scored 15 points, and in week five scored 10. So I I offer him a trade, Fitzpatrick, for Miami against the Jets this week, uh, for Madison. And he accepts the trade. Fair trade, we both benefit. And then I wake up this morning feeling good about my team. I got a great team going this week. I feel like I should win. And I hear this news. The Atlanta Falcons have shut down their practice facility because of a positive COVID test. Marlon Davidson, who I have never heard of. Have you heard of Marlon Davidson? I don't know who he is. But I know this, because of him testing positive for COVID on Wednesday, the Falcons shut down their practice facility today. Why is the Falcons, why are they important? Because they travel to Minnesota on Sunday. That's why it's important. And Madison doesn't play if they cancel or postpone the game. And so I'm in the ditch. I'm like, I'll make a great trade. And now I can't use it. And Dalvin Cook, who Madison's replacing with his injury, may well be back in two or three weeks. So I mope around, I grope around, and then 
I turn on the radio and I hear a report from the NFL Network that this was a one-time thing and that there were false positives this morning and that there is a chance the Falcon camp may be reopened for business as early as this afternoon. Yeah! What does that mean? That means my trade worked! So I'm hopeful that the Falcons return to camp, selfishly, and for the good of the players as well, mostly. But what I'm getting at is fantasy sports, particularly the NFL, where you only have one game a week. If you're in a league where you have limited number of moves, and in my 14-team league, we do. We can only make four moves a week. Now, you can trade as much as you want to. There aren't many trades in this league. But you can only make four free agent waiver wire ads a week. That's it. So if you're without a defense a particular week, you got to add that. There's one move. If you're without a defensive player the same week, there's two moves. You're only down to two. This year, you have to manage your limited move leagues differently. You can't go and use all your moves on Tuesday because you never know when something like this COVID shutting down a facility out of nowhere happens and then you'd be without players. I got three Cowboys on my team. Any Cowboy fans out there? I got three on my team. If COVID hits the Cowboys, and I, lose all, and I lost all three of those. I've got some backups. I don't have another quarterback. I would then have to use a move to pick up a quarterback. A pretty important position. Would you not agree? But if I had used all my moves and think I have this solid roster, and then I lose somebody to COVID, I'm screwed. So keep your eye out. Save some moves. This is Fantasy Advice 101. It's not just knowing the rules of your league. It's not just knowing the teams and the weaknesses of players who they're playing against. We do a lot of research on who the cornerback is covering this particular wide receiver. Are they no good? Are they good? It may impact the impact performance of a player. Those used to be what the only things we looked at. We took for granted the fact that games would be played. You can no longer do that. You can no longer take for granted the fact that games will be played. That is no longer a fact. We've already seen it. We've seen games moved. For example, two weeks ago, Herbert, the rookie quarterback for the Los Angeles Chargers, who's having a great rookie campaign. I knew Russell Wilson had a bye week in week six. I knew Herbert was killing it. I knew Herbert played... Week six. This was two weeks ago. So preemptively, I go out and add Justin Herbert so week six he can start for me in lieu of Russell Wilson. Oh, the best laid plans. And then when COVID hits, the NFL reshuffles the schedule. The Chargers don't play in week six. They get a late later bye. What does that mean? Justin Herbert doesn't play in week six. I wasted a move. Now, I thought I was making a good move. So I wake up really early Wednesday morning, and I add Fitzpatrick, and I add Andy Dalton for the Dallas Cowboys. And hope now that Andy Dalton doesn't get sick. What a year. I say before your league start, and this is a good idea for Major League Baseball, too. For fantasy season-long leagues, if you're playing daily, it doesn't matter. You can adjust. Season-long leagues because of COVID. Ask your, ask your commissioner either A, for extra moves based on COVID, or extra IL injury reserve list, if it would be that way in football, so you can make a move that you would not normally have to make. I mean, the ultimate thing is you want to be competitive in your fantasy leagues. You want to have fun with it. And frankly, it's not much fun if your opponent only has four players and you have nine. 
Hey, you're going to win. You're not going to follow the games as intently on Sunday. I think I've learned more about the Cleveland Browns. I've learned more about the New York Jets. I've learned more about the Washington football team than I ever would have being a diehard Raider fan that I am because now with fantasy going on, you're going to watch these other teams. But if you don't have the interest, you're killing somebody because they're not playing because their players are out sick. Doesn't quite have the gusto, you know what I mean? So, just some thoughts. Games today, 4 o'clock, Tampa, Houston. 8 o'clock, Dodgers, Braves. I'm looking for the Rays to clinch it tonight. I'm looking for the Dodgers to extend it to a game five. We shall see. I'll be back with you on Monday on the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network and Arnie's Fantasy World of Sports.